digital content marketer, and I'm joined today by my lovely friend Bowie, our digital strategist. We're going to be talking about content marketing and using content as a business strategy. I'm really excited for this one. This is a long time coming and something that we're really passionate here about at Envision. So um, join us in welcoming our guest, Bowie. Welcome. Hello. How are you today? Fantastic. So let's get right into it. Um, digital content marketing. Can you just maybe summarize that for us very quickly? What is it? What do you do with it? How does it work? Yeah, I think when it comes to content marketing, what is in content, right? At the end of the day, and we're in a situation right now uh, where there's content everywhere. We are bombarded with content. Everyone else is producing content. So what is its purpose and between everything and realistically, uh, and two of us have spoken about it, it's a communication strategy and it needs to be taken with more nuance, with more care. So there's actual intent and purpose. Realistically, the content itself, when it comes to like the deliverable or the thing could vary. It could be a video, it could be a photo, it could be a copywriting, you know, and figuring out where that lives has to be part of that content conversation too, right? Not to mention, again, everything needs to go back to purpose. So making sure that those pieces of content make sense. So where are some places that content lives online? Like beyond the specific that we all know and love, socials, TikTok, Instagram, like where else can content live? Yeah, I think there's a bunch of places people miss and business owners I've spoken to always forget about these things like your website itself, right? Are we talking about your service pages, your homepage above the fold? Um, things like email marketing, right? That's mm -hmm. content, right? You've got your writing. Uh, where does that email lead that user? Is there supposed to be any engagement? So there's a lot of different facets to this and it even extends further out into things like maybe ads or uh, any deliverable materials your sales team might be using, like sell sheets. So there's a myriad of things that do fall under content marketing. I'm really glad to hear you say that. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of people don't realize. We're engaging with content all the time and we don't realize it's content. Yeah. You know, we just think it's something adjacent to content or maybe it supplements content, but it actually is content on its own. And that all factors into what you had said, that communication strategy, like how you're positioning, you know, like the language you're using, your tone, the voice, what that message actually is, gets communicated in everything from words to video to sound. So I think maybe like Let's pivot a little bit away from like the more exciting facets of content that we know from socials. And let's talk a little bit more about what businesses need to know about content. Um, this is something that we deal with a lot on a day to day basis. We're actually trying to help businesses align their content to their messaging or mm -hmm. their positioning. So let's take it from the top. Like, what does a business need to know about the content before they start making it? For sure. Uh, at any point, I think we can all agree there needs to be a purpose to it, right? And realistically, for just about all businesses, the purpose is we wanna drive sales of some form. We wanna encourage a potential customer, a prospect to move further down their customer journey, their marketing funnel, their sales funnel, whatever format or a framework you use. So they're engaging and more convinced as they're engaging with more content and seeing consuming more content. Um, I think that always has to be a core to everything. One of the biggest pitfalls that pains me so much is whenever I'm working with business leaders and business owners, and they're just saying, hey, we just want social posts. We just want a bunch of blogs, you know, but it's like, what's the purpose of it? You know, they're just publishing for the sake of publishing. You're not going to get any results of it. There needs to be a sense of quality, intention, and outcome that you want out of content. Stop making it just for the sake of it. Um, so like when we're talking about customer journey again, right? So there needs to be different phases in terms of this experience with your clients, with your prospects. They're, how are they finding out the problem? How are they being sold? What are the pain points that we need to communicate and talk about? And when it comes to content, content's purpose here is to really directly address it so that the user can go through these stages. Uh, an example might be actually saying, okay, we've mapped out our customer journey. We know for a fact uh, they have a bunch of questions on shipping. Maybe your e-commerce brand. If you're, if you know for a fact your customers have a problem with shipping, it's one of their biggest pain points. Why are you not putting that front and center in terms of content to let them know on your homepage? You know, this is one of the cells when you work with us. So this piece of content, whether it's copy, whether it's communicating it in ads, however you see fit, needs to address those. Where first you're answering the user 
pain point of some form. Second, it's in a medium as well as a platform that makes sense for that message. And that's why this is more of a communication strategy. First is just, you know, produce more content, make the content, you know, publish stuff. So how do you know where that content needs to live? Like, how do you evaluate that? As, yeah. as a business owner, how should you be evaluating that? Like what kind of research goes into making these decisions? Yeah, I think for most business owners, the conversation has to start internally. Realistically, you need to talk to people on your team. It might be the people who are client facing, it might be people who are working with uh, the product itself and understanding it. It could be your marketing team, your sales team, whoever you see fit. But we need to understand and start mapping this out in a way that we can say, we know for a fact, our customers need these five things answered before they even consider us as a potential mm -hmm. to get on that like day one short list of... Um, who do I want to go to for the solution, right? We know people shop around. The customer journey is so much longer since we moved to digital, since we moved to content. And you need to ask the hard questions of, are we serving our customers properly? Are we doing them a disservice? Are we actually answering what they need so we can help them? Yeah, I I love that you brought up the customer journey. I just think it's one of the most overlooked things that people consume content so organically mm -hmm. and it's just become such a normal everyday part of their experience, just living day to day that the thoughts behind that or really like the reflections of that don't necessarily happen to the depth that they should for business owners. Um, asking questions like, where does my target audience or where do the people that I want to target or get to where are they consuming content? Like, where are they going to look for this information? That's where you need to be, right? Like, you can't hope that the people that you want to target are on Instagram if the data shows that they're actually on LinkedIn or they're actually still looking things up on Google or maybe predominantly this industry is a word of mouth industry. So those are all factors that really, really need to be um, researched very well. And those decisions need to be made long before the content efforts happen. But internally having these conversations, I think is also important uh, for us as well. Like mm -hmm. even as a marketing agency, like we have internal conversations all the time. Like we're so inundated with um, information that may or may not change the trajectory of how we provide this service. Um, what would you say to a business owner who comes in and asks you like, hey, I heard from so-and-so that uh, their business is booming on social media. I want to get in on that. I think no matter what, every single business is different. And that's the part that I constantly have to have conversations with. And they're tough conversations sometimes, unfortunately. And the biggest thing is it's easy to point at someone and say, it's working for them. Why can't I be on like WeChat, right? But realistically, you are not your competitors. And people constantly forget that the position you're in right now is slightly different than your competitors. Yes, you're competing for the same market, but what you're able to service, what you're really good at and where you want to be is gonna look different. So you need to make everything custom to what your business needs right now so we can get to where you want to be. And that means let's look at who can we service the best? Who is your ideal clientele? And let's build this customer's journey around them. After we build this customer journey, we can then have a conversation about what are the best channels and what are the key messages we need to communicate as a starting point. Mm -hmm. And these are things that evolve, right? Customer mm -hmm. journey, like this exercise, isn't a one size fits all or a one time go. You go, you try it out and you experiment. Marketing, when it comes to digital, has to be experiment because we have a hypothesis and we need to test it for results. Yeah, I think there's also this really interesting thing that happens in that you become more of an expert in your field as a business owner, that you really understand your field, you really understand your product, your service, um, and you forget that that same expertise is actually beneficial for a marketing agency as well. Like we're not the, the subject matter expert. You are as a business owner, and we need that expertise to help guide that strategy. So Business owners are, you know, looking for our expertise when it comes to marketing efforts, but really in order to like take that to the next level, to like elevate that business strategy or that content strategy, we really need that kind of inside scoop. We need that like behind the scenes look and information because like, I don't, I don't know what like, you know, what tool you would need to dismantle a roller coaster, but somebody in the industry does. And they'd be giving me that information to create better content or to like better align that strategy. Yeah. I think you hit on like a really, really good point. You know, 
when we are, whenever we say partners, we really mean it. And the reason is, no matter what, we're not on the ground, right? We're not on the ground. We're not answering the calls in your sales team. We're not lo- able to like have a quick meeting with customer service to see what's happening. What are people asking? We need to use our tools collectively with the business owners or the operators or their team so that there is alignment in this journey, right? What are the things that people are saying repeatedly in the sales call that we need to start answering maybe over Mm -hmm. emails, right? Um, If we're actually nurturing these and keep in mind, like when it comes to getting a lead, getting a lead is freaking expensive. So if you're not properly nurturing your lead through good content, through a customer journey, you're throwing money down the freaking drain, right? So all this is in efforts of making stronger connections to sales, making stronger connections to results and creating content that's actually meaningful and has a purpose for your bottom line, realistically. Yeah. And looping back to what you said about looking internally first, like your sales team are the perfect people to ask, like, what kind of information do my customers actually want? You know, like, where are those gaps? Identifying those gaps, the best place to start is internally. Because like, I can go on Google and do some research and get like a general idea of, you know, what your product is or like what kind of services I would need to solve my problem. But I need a subject matter expert. I need someone who knows this industry. And that's where your sales team, that's where like, you know, your your leaders in your business Mm -hmm. are positioned perfectly to answer these questions and provide you with that information. Um, Moving on, uh, this is the big question. The algorithm changes all the time. So how do we, how do we work with that? Like, how do we actually change with it? How do we work with it? And how do we make sure that our efforts aren't wasted when it comes to content? Yeah, I think one of the things too with algorithm I want to add in, it's not just social media. There's algorithm in paid advertising, there's algorithm in SEO, and even email has algorithm to some extent. So no matter what, these things are going to change. They're going to change literally on a daily basis. There might be 500 changes on Google alone, let alone like any other platforms with major updates. When it comes to content, it needs to actually perform for the client first and foremost, right? Our target audience and the question that we're trying to address, like I'm repeating myself. But nevertheless, if it doesn't serve them and provide that unique voice for your brand specifically, it's going to fail. Algorithm updates, they come and go, but no matter what, good content will survive, right? So it makes a huge difference in actually impacting results and impacting that experience for your customers. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's that's like a really lovely takeaway. Um, I do want to ask you a few more questions. And one of the main points that I get asked quite a lot by our clients is like, well, if we're going to be doing it for this platform or for this space, like why not just repurpose it for something else? Like if we're making it for my website, like why shouldn't we put that on Instagram? Or like, why shouldn't we put that on Facebook? And I'm just hoping to get some insight from a strategist. Like, why is that a bad strategy? It is so painful when I hear that every freaking time. And the problem is, yes, you could do that. You could repurpose it and listen to everyone online. Um, but realistically, it's a situation where it's like, but like, why? What's the purpose? Who are you actually talking to? Are you really going to post that to TikTok? Like, what's the point? You know, are you going to bother with Facebook? Like, there's still time and effort required. There's still some level of your brand representation being seen. And it's wasted efforts in short. You're just wasting whatever time it is. And that time adds up over the course of a year, right? Even if it maybe takes um, an extra hour, right? That's 12 hours that could have been dedicated to making better content to perform on places that actually make sense. That's my take on it. And it's an ongoing conversation. I know people have different perspectives and it's so difficult because it sounds easy, but what's the point if it doesn't do anything for you? Yeah. Or like we said before, if your audience isn't on there or using that platform. Yeah. Something that I struggle with a lot is the idea that every single marketing effort needs to be measured in the same way. So there are a lot of efforts and a lot of work and a lot of research that goes into every different facet of digital marketing. But traditionally, we have ways of measuring things. We've got metrics that we can read Mm -hmm. that are pretty easy to quantify. Not necessarily the case when it comes to content marketing. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. Like, why not? Why can't we use traditional measurements or traditional metrics to assess whether content marketing efforts are working? 
Yeah, I think one of the things is everyone comes in saying, I just want more sales. I just want more leads. That's it, right? But realistically, like what happens when people actually go through this process of deciding who the hell do I go with? There's so many steps. And some of our customer journeys that we're planning out for our contents or for our clients is upwards of like over a year. Mm-hmm. And that's where content comes in. That's where nurturing comes in. In marketing, uh, one of the ways you can break it down is we have retention, we have performance, and then we have brand. Now, the thing with, with content marketing is that we can touch on all of these, but where you, content marketing really shines is in that brand space, right? Who are you actually positioning yourself as? And that's something we always forget. Brand and branding are completely different concepts. And the ROI on a strong brand in your industry with who you want is freaking priceless. That's how you get on that day one shortlist. Day one <laughs> shortlist, you know? Getting on that day one shortlist means that you're always top of mind. And that that's where content comes in. You're building authority, you're building trust, and that needs to be planned throughout the years. It's an ongoing process where you're asking yourself, Am I actually positioning myself good in the market? Am I actually asking the right questions of my clients? Am I servicing them also really well that I'm building my reputation? It has to be multifaceted where they're hooked in from the beginning and continues through as a loyalist, right? Um, So in short, like you can't always quantify it by just pure leads and performance, which is really realistically short sighted and limiting, we need to be looking at a larger scale where we have the year over year, where we have the ideas of like, okay, what is the sentiment, right? Are people actually engaging more with you in some sense? Are you growing your audience in a meaningful way? So those are all aspects we have to consider. And when we look at metrics, that's a nuance we have to take uh, examination of because it cannot be just pure traffic to a website, you know, total leads, you know, it needs to be about quality too. And without that part, are we really doing our jobs as marketers to help support your sales team, to help support your business? Yeah, building that trust is super important because more and more that we see that like people are going online to try to kind of like audit Mm -hmm. to be like, do other people trust this company? Do other people trust this service or this product? Um, Not only are they looking to others to validate whether this is a a sale or whether this is a good product for them to invest in. They're also trying to look to places outside of the digital space. You know, like, are more people wearing a specific brand of shoe than they were five years ago? That's content marketing at work. You know, that's that trust building. Has something skyrocketed in popularity and sustained that Mm -hmm. reputation? That's content marketing at work. And although we can't necessarily measure that immediately or we can't, you know, like use like analytics and be like, hmm, do more people trust us? That's still bankable. Like we still see that factoring into um, higher revenue year over year. Yes. But we can't necessarily attribute it directly the way that we could for something like ad spend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, When we talk about customer journey, that's part of the conversation too, right? Having those micro metrics at a regular touch point, we can assess and make that conversation point of, are we a little bit on track? But I agree, the full fruits of that labor don't transpire until years down the line. Yeah. And what does a sustainable effort for content marketing look like for a business? Like somebody who's just starting and thinking like, oh, I just need content marketing for like six months. Like, what would you say to somebody like that? (laughs) I think that's a hard question in, or a hard conversation or another one. And the main reason is it depends on what your goals are realistically as a business owner. What can you really expect for six months of marketing for your, comp- your company to completely swap to become an industry leader? Like what is the budget? What is the needs? What tools and assets do we have, right? And in those types of situations and cases, it needs to be a conversation of, what makes most sense for your business right now? Mm -hmm. Is this a campaign we can run? Is this a campaign that's scalable? Is this a campaign that we have realistic expectations that we can then potentially repeat or take learnings from? So having that relationship with our clients has been really imperative to have that active conversation and potentially even that touch point with sales so that we can build that together. All of this is amazing. Like so many wonderful insights. There's so many things that we can like talk about forever when it comes yeah. to content marketing. Let's talk about tactics though. Um, we've got viewers out there who are like, I need to get in on content marketing. I need to start something. I need content. What do they do? What do you tell them? Like, how do they get started? What are some actionable ways that you can make content marketing work for you as a business who's just getting started? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing to keep in mind, 
you want a content marketing strategy because you don't want to fail your prospects. You don't want to fail your clients. Take, an inter- take some time to internally ask yourself, am I meeting my goals and how can I get there? Where are the gaps in conversations? Ask your team, have those conversations. And as a starting point, that will at least have some level of direction on where you can like min max your efforts. Mm -hmm. So you're actually investing in things that could be fruitful, right? Not just feeling fruitful or like just cause for funsies, but have meaning that answers some level of a question, right? Um, For us, that's where we always start the conversation. We really encourage uh, business owners to start that internally as well. And if you need further like discussion, reach outside, you know, talk to other strategists, talk to other people in your industry and figure out what your clients need the most. You might find from this conversation that nobody's using LinkedIn in your industry. You know, why are we bothering and pushing maybe the CEO to do videos if like it's not making sense? Um, And instead, maybe these are all email based relationships with existing clientele and retention is a key, right? So making all these pivots means that you can at least focus your efforts and not just saying, I want to be a thought leader for funsies for something that's more fruitful that we're seeing results from. Um, I know that's not direct one, two, threes, but it needs to start with some level of conversation and you need to start mapping it out. Uh, So we can actually tackle what makes sense and have a purpose and a why to every piece. Yeah. And not all kind of content will address every single problem the same way. So if you can identify that right from the get-go, if you know exactly what your pain points are, that'll illuminate the path for you. Thanks for joining us today, Bowie, from one content aficionado to another. Um, Hope to see you again on Brews and Buzzword soon. Tune in next month for our next episode. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. If you got something out of it, Please like, subscribe, or share it with your friends.